I've completely fallen off the wagon. I have bought so many books. It's... There's a lot. I'm here today to talk about the biggest book haul I have ever done. I completely and utterly fell off the wagon. I I don't know what happened. I went out and about and I just saw books and it just it just this madness descended. So there are so many books here that I'm gonna talk about. Um, that I'm going to actually not be able to talk about all of them because there is too many of them so I'm just going to show you collections of some of them there's two lots of collections of loads of books um, and um, I'm just going to actually there's three loads of collections that'll cut the time down um, okay so I've sorted them into genres and because there is so many of them I'm just going to crack on I'll tell you whether I bought them there are two or three that I was sent there are many many that I bought um, so I'm just going to I'm just going to start so the first pile that I've got are women's fiction um, and there's only there's only two women's fiction. Um, I picked these up from the charity shop. They were ten pence each. So the first book that I've got is this one. This is Good Husband Material by Trisha Ashley. This is about a woman who is what's her name? Trish. Tish. Tish. Tish written by Trish. Tish is with James and James is everything that Tish could have wanted. He's handsome, dependable, good father material and he's everything that um, Tish and her family would have wanted. Even her mum approves of him. And he's just everything that she needed after her last boyfriend Fergal. Is it Fergal? Let's find out. Fergal, yeah. Fergal broke her heart and left her for a, for a sort of a lifetime of rock and roll. So they buy a house in the country, this Tish and James, and um, they are happily settled and, and she's able to write for, for her work at home and she's able to bake for pleasure and she just lives this happy little life. Um, and the next step is children. And um, even though, you know, sometimes James spends a bit too much time at the pub, she thinks it's okay, it's just the seven year age, it's fine, it's fine. But then Fergal, ex-boyfriend, gorgeous Fergal, who um, ran off for a life of rock and roll, turns up in this little country village and um, it starts stirring. So it's women's fiction, so I'm assuming there's going to be a happy ending, she's going to realise she loves one of them and get with them in the end, and um, I'm here for it. The next book is also another one by Trisha Ashley, and this is The Little Tea Shop of Lost and Found. Um, and this is about Ashley Rose who was um, abandoned as a baby and was found and adopted in but later rejected by a cruel stepmother and the only sort of solace that she found was in baking and um, so eventually she returns back to where she was adopted and, or, or found um, and she takes over an old tea shop and begins to bake and um, she makes friends along the way and discovers a, an and one of the women that she makes friends with starts helping her unravel her past and find out who she really is. And it says there's some twists and turns along the way as she finds out who she really is and what secrets her past um, holds for her. And so this sounds fun and um, I couldn't resist it for the 10p that the world wanted for it. So yeah, brilliant. The next pile of books that I got are thrillers. Um, I have three thrillers and all three of those were sent to me. They're the only books that have been sent to me in all of this. Um, in all of this that I've got absolutely everything else. So these are the three books that I was sent this month. All of them were thrillers. Um, and the first one is by Rebecca Thornton and it's called Your Guilty Secret. This is a book that sounds really interesting. This is about Lara King. Now Lara King is a sort of a celebrity. She's on all of the sort of showbiz newspapers and things. And she's sort of got a high profile relationship with a film star called Matthew. They've got a perfect six year old daughter and her whole life just seems picture perfect and absolute bliss. But a terrible incident shatters the facade and a media frenzy ensues and, and it says what happens when the perfect woman begins to unravel when her whole life is really just a lie? One, she will do anything she can to protect. This sounds great. Can't wait to read it. It's on my TBR this month. Yes. The next one that I was very kindly sent is this one, The Secrets You Hide by Kate Helm. So let me just read this to you. Can the truth set her free? Georgia Sage has a gift. She can see evil in people. As a court remarker, she uses her skills to help condemn those who commit terrible crimes. Her own brutal past has taught her that innocence is more rare than justice. But when she's drawn back into the trial to find a career, a case of twisted family betrayal, she realises that her own reckless pursuit of justice may have helped the guilty go free. But as Georgia gets closer to the truth behind the case, something happens that threatens not only her career, but her sanity. Is her guilt about her own childhood trauma, or is something even more terrifying happening to her? I can't wait, that sounds so exciting. Um, I don't think I've read anything like this before. I've definitely never read anything about a courtroom sketch artist. It's an avenue that really interests me. Like I often, when I watch true crime things and it's uh, like the, the show the British court system and they have it all drawn in and things, I always wonder who the people are who are drawing this. And 
I just, I'm excited. So the next book that I've got is this one. This is another one that was very kindly sent to me and I can't wait to read it. This is Tana French's The Witch Elm. This sounds interesting. So this is about Toby. Now Toby, um, one night, is a victim of a very brutal attack and it leaves him sort of reeling and he doesn't know who he is anymore. He feels like he's changed as a person and it's just, it sounds like a terrible, terrible attack that happens to him. So he ends up going back to his old family's old ancestral home, the Ivy House, where he's got really good memories of his childhood and teenage parties and things. But not long after his arrival that he finds a skull tucked into the old witch elm in the, in the garden. And as a detective started closing on the case, he's having to sort of really examine who he is and who his family are and um, uncover who this, who this skull is. And it sounds exciting, very exciting. The next books that I've got are non-fiction. I've got one, two, three, four, five non-fiction books to talk about. So um, yeah, let's crack on. So the first one that I've got is this one by Ben Coates. This is Why the Dutch Are Different. So this is a non-fiction about Ben who gets stranded at Schiphol Airport and he rings up a Dutch girl that he met a few months prior and ends up staying the night and then ends up staying for good. So this is his sort of look into his adopted homeland. And I used to live on the Dutch-German border and um, I was fascinated by Holland and I used to go to Holland quite a lot when I was a kid and um, it says it has an answer to some of the world's questions about Holland such as um, who really captured Anne Frank? Why Amsterdam's brothels are going out of business? Which town has the best carnival outside Brazil? Why the Dutch are the tallest people on earth? I would go into shops and people would tower above me and, and I'm not small. I'm five foot six myself and it was like, it, it, yeah, so <laughs> I saw this in the shops, I picked it up on a whim because I loved living on the Dutch-German border. Um, I miss Holland, I haven't been in a long time and um, yeah, I just thought I'd pick this up for a little bit of nostalgia. The next week that I've gotten really excited about this one is Mary Queen of Scots by John Guy. This is actually a film now as well and I'm, this is the film cover. Um, I hate when books do that and give you just the film cover but it was cheaper than, um, than anything else so I, I picked this one up. It's a thick old thing. How big is this? Wow, this looks like it's going to take some reading. Um, 515 pages and it's about Mary Queen of Scots who was crowned a Queen of Scotland at uh, nine months old and by the age of 15 or 16 she was the Queen of France and she had a long-standing sort of rivalry with her sister Elizabeth and um, this is about her life, uh, her sort of turmoil, her battles and um, yeah I'm really excited to read about it. I've always been really interested in the relationship between Mary and Elizabeth and it was always something that interested me at school and um, yeah so I saw this recommended to me in my recommended list on um, Book Depository I think um, and uh, picked it up and I'm really looking forward to reading about it. The next book that I've got is a little bit different but I'm really excited by it. This is Unexplained and this is by Richard McLean Smith. This has water on it. Um, try and get it clean. This is um, from a podcast of the same. It is 10 Real Life Unexplained Mysteries. Um, I love Unexplained Mysteries, especially ones that have got sort of a supernatural element, which some of these have. Um, so, for example, um, what can a case of demonic possession in 1970s Germany teach us about free will? What might we learn about how we construct reality from a case of a poltergeist in the fen? And so I'm excited to delve into this and I think it should be quite an easy read if it's 10 different cases. I think it'll be an easy dip in, dip out of um, book and um, yeah, again it was another one picked up on a complete whim. The next one that I've got, another one picked up on a whim. Um, this is Nothing to Envy by Barbara Demick and this is realised in North Korea. Um, North Korea is another country that interests me. Um, I have listened to a few audiobooks set in North Korea. I loved In Order to Live by Yomi Park which was set in um, Korea and her life in North Korea um, and so I picked up this. So this is the story of um, six or seven different people I think interwoven um, into um, Barbara Demick's um, sort of work as a journalist and um, I think she sort of uncovered a bit of what's going on in North Korea and talks about the different lives of the people that are living there and um, I I'm just interested to further my sort of understanding of the country, understanding of the people and um, looking forward to this, this fresh take on it. The next book that I've got is a bit of a wild card, don't think I'm odd, but I couldn't, um, I couldn't resist it. This is Christopher Dell's The Occult, Witchcraft and Magic, an Illustrated History. Now again, um, I have always been into supernaturally type things and um, 
the old earth religions and things and um, I am particularly very interested in witchcraft and witches and stories involving witchcraft and um, stories involving real witches and so when I saw this it just it so, sort of spoke to me as the type of book that I would enjoy dipping in and out of I don't think it's gonna be one that I'll sit and read cover to cover but it's got sort of a lot of really interesting illustrations in it and um, just in, uh, information about um, witchcraft and the occult so I can't wait to read that and um, I do think it'll be one that I will take a long time to read. It's definitely not sort of a sit down, read page to page novel, but um, I'm going to start dipping in and out of this ASAP and um, educate myself. So those were the non-fictions. And finally, I have picked up sort of um, a big box, well a big, a big selection of YA and children's literature um, and I'm just going to yeah, there is loads of it, so I'm just going to group them together, I think. So, what have, I, what have I got? What have I got? The first two, I'll do these separately because I bought these from the charity shop. And when I got the till, the woman said all the children's books today are free. I don't, I don't know how that would work in a charity shop. Um, but she just, she wouldn't take any payment for them. And um, they didn't even have a donation box. So I don't know if they've just had too many children's books and wanted rid of them. But whatever, these were free. Um, and I got this one, Goosebumps, Say Cheese and Die. If you're of a certain age, <coughs> my age, quite old, um, you might remember Goosebumps and you might have been really into them when you were younger. I loved Goosebumps. I always thought, I will say, I always thought the endings were a bit rubbish. I never really liked R.L. Stein's endings and I'm talking about as a seven, eight year old child. I hated the endings. I always thought they were a bit sort of, um, and then I went home for tea. The end. That's how I always found them, but they're entertaining. And um, my six-year-old daughter is um, really into spooky things and um, witches and things. I wonder where she gets it. Anyway, she she um, I let her watch some of the Goosebumps series on TV. We found it on Netflix and she loved it. So I've hunted out a few of my old Goosebumps books for her and we're going to read them after we've finished reading the current chapter book we're on. Um, but when I finish reading that I'm going to start some of the Goosebumps and she saw this in the charity shop and lost a tiny mind and um, insisted that I bought it and so I did. So that's Say Cheese and Die and um, be prepared. There's a lot more Goosebumps which I'll pack, so we'll stick together. Ah, next one that was free. This one, The Secrets of Mooncastle by Enid Blyton. Me and my daughter have been reading the Secrets of series um, for a little while and then this one is the last in the series and there it was, sitting in the charity shop. Ah, the next ones that I've got is a collection, you'll be glad to know so I won't go through each individual book, but da -da 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 -da, I picked up a collection of Goosebumps books for to read with my daughter um, and uh, yeah, I got all of these for the grand total of £15. I was very excited about that from the works. If you don't often go in the works, you should do because you often get like groups of books in there for really good prices. So this is a collection of some of R.L. Stein's sort of more known Goosebumps books, Night of the Living Dummy. The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight, The Blob That Ate Everyone, Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. Now I'm sure this used to be called Revenge of the Garden Gnomes. I don't know if it's been changed or whether it was Garden Gnomes in America and Lawn Gnomes in the UK or... But I'm sure it was Revenge of the Garden Gnomes. I'm sure I had a copy of this when I was a kid and it was Garden Gnomes. I might just be making that up. Um, the Werewolf of Fever Swamp, the Haunted Car. Let's Get Invisible. Stay Out of the Basement, which was a brilliant one. I love this one. And The Ghost Next Door. So I have all of those to read with my daughter and I just can't wait to get through them because I think she's going to become a horror fan like myself. And when she gets older, that is going to be amazing because we can watch all the horror films together and things. It's going to be great. So um, yeah, I'm sort of nurturing our love of all things supernatural. So the next collection that I picked up, I was off camera there, I apologise. The next collection that I picked up is this one, a Jacqueline Wilson collection. Look how beautiful this is. Oh, I was really excited to pick this up. This is by Penguin and um, just I loved Jacqueline Wilson. And I will say, I, did, I forgot how mature she was in writing style. Um, I've been reading Lola Rose to my daughter and there's parts I've had to skip over because it's been quite... Um, 
there are some things in it I don't really want her to know. Um, I forgot just how mature Jacqueline Wilson can be, but I still pick this up anyway um, as a sort of a future reading thing. But this contains a selection of Jacqueline Wilson's books. We have Secrets, we have Sleepovers, we have Bad Girls, we have The Suitcase Kid, we've got Clean Break, we've got The Lottie Project, we've got Midnight, The Illustrated Mum, Cookie and The Bed and Breakfast Club. Super excited to get through these and um, I just I love the display case. Look at it, it's absolutely beautiful. And finally, the, the, the grand finale of the books that we have is another awesome collection. Look at this. This is the Horrible Histories Blood Curdling box of books. On the bottom here it says £99.99 .99 printed on the box. Um, and I paid £15 for it and um, this was recently. So if you've got kids and you want to sort of get them into history and things, um, the horrible histories are really good, sort of go into the more grim aspects of history. So in this box we've got um, the Savage Stone Age, the Awesome Egyptians, the Groovy Greeks, the Rotten Romans, Cutthroat, Kel Cutthroat Celts, Smashing Saxons, Vicious Vikings, Storming Normans, Angry Aztecs, Incredible Incas, Measly Middle Ages, Terrible Tudors, Slimy Stuarts, Gorgeous Georgians, The Vile Victorians, Villainous Victorians, Balmy British Empire, Frightful First World War, War Woeful Second World War, and The Blitzed Brits. I can't wait to get through these. And what, if you're not familiar with the Horrible Histories books, I'll just pick one at random, The Angry Aztecs. It um it tells kids the sort of the grim and gory details that kids want to know. Um, so for example, this is the Aztecs one. So it says it's history with the nasty bits left in. So it says, do you want to know why the Aztecs like to eat scum? How to play a really violent ball game? Discover all the fell facts about the angry Aztecs, all the gore and more. Um, and I can remember winning one of these books at the at the library, and it's got sort of um little sort of illustrations, sort of um, comic book style and things, and it's really good for engaging kids into history, and I'm all about engaging children into learning without them realising that they're being taught. So um, I'm going to read those to my daughter, and uh, when she starts doing all of these different things at school, all of these different um, periods of history, she is going to be an expert on all of the bits that they won't teach her, and you know, maybe she can teach them things, it's going to be great. So that's it for my rather epic, massive, massive, massive massive haul. Um, let me know if you've read any of these, let me know if you're going to, let me know if you're going to go to the works now, go running along and collect all of these amazing books for like £15 for a huge thing. Don't even go, go online, you can get them online from the works, it's brilliant. Um, so I'm going to go now and put all of these on my shelves and prepare, um, I don't know what I'm going to prepare but I'm going to prepare and I'll speak to you soon, bye for now.